of leadership. Paul told them about the saints in Judea that had a need, and they said, you know what, Paul? We know you. We've watched you. We trust you. Sure, we'll give. That's a word. Because you told us that's a worthy project, we trust you and we'll give. They gave according to his leadership because it was a godly leadership. He directed them. They submitted to the Lord and they submitted to the leaders. And last of all here, they gave of their own accord. They settled the issue of love. Oh, my dear friends today. If we could only settle those three things, lordship, leadership, and love. Just settle those three things like those churches in Macedonia did. First, give yourself to the Lord. Then, give yourself to church, the church leaders. And third, have a baptism of love in your life. You'll do things because you love God that you will not do for any other reason. Settle those three things. Now, fourth, the last thing I want to point out from these verses in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 today is that uh, a good steward church enjoys God's blessings. When they settled those issues, exciting things began to happen. Look at the blessings that God gave them there in verse 1. We read it right at the beginning. First of all, it says there in, in verse 1, it says that... Uh, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. So number one, the grace of God was given to them. Paul said, because you are this way, God's grace has been manifested and bestowed upon you. And then number two, and I really love this one. They had the ability to give beyond their resources. That's what verse three says. For I bear witness that according to their ability and yes, Beyond their ability, they were freely willing. According to their ability and beyond their ability, they were freely willing. That was God's second blessing, that they could give beyond their resources. Now, now we, we, we've got to stop here because that's so powerful in verse 3. Paul said that they, oh, we just read what Paul said. And you say, well, wait a minute, Pastor. Wait a minute, Pastor. Did, did I read that right? That they gave beyond their ability? Yes. Yes, you did read that right. They gave according to their ability. And then Paul said they even gave beyond their ability. Okay, Pastor, I understand about giving according to your ability. But I don't understand giving beyond your ability. How can you give more than you are able to give? How can you do more than you are able to do? Ah. I'm glad you asked. Because you see, our part is to give according to our ability. That's all God asks. Can we give any more than 100%? Can, can we give any more than settle the lordship of who's number one in our life? No, we can't. Do your best. Give according to your ability. And then God says, you've done your best. Now, I'm going to put my hand in it, and I'm going to do miracles with your best. You see, it's the story of the loaves and the fishes, the five loaves and two fish that we looked at in, in the first message in this series. A little boy, he only had a little bit, only one lunch, enough for himself, but he gave it to the Lord. And then what happened to that? God blessed it and multiplied it, and many baskets were left over at the end. We say, oh, that's fantastic. Those Bible stories are really great. But we, may, we take those stories and we put those Bible stories way over there. And, and then we live our life way over here. And we don't understand that what God did over there, he wants to do right here. Amen. He's done it a hundred times right here. And so I want to close with a true story. Her name was Helen Douglas. She was the poorest lady in the church. She lived in a government housing project. She had a car that was way too old. Mm. She had bumper stickers plastered all over that car. And the pastors would say to her, Helen, the only reason that you have those bumper stickers on your car is to keep it together. It's so old that if you pull one of those bumper stickers off, it would just fall to pieces. Now, 
And so she's the poorest lady in the church. The church fell into a situation where they had a tremendous need. They were building, they were in the middle of a large sanctuary expansion, and the electrical contractor went bankrupt in the middle of it, and he'd been taking the church's money to pay other bills and not paying their bills. Mm. And suddenly, they were left hanging with about $60,000 extra that they had to pay all over again. It was like paying for your stuff twice, $60,000. And so the pastor went to the congregation and told them about it, and they decided to have a Jeremiah 33 3 day. You know what that is? I call that God's 1 800 number, Jeremiah 33 3. Call on me, God says, and I will show you what? Great and mighty things that you do not know. All right? And so they, they set one day aside in which they were going to take up an offering and they were going to believe that God would supply the need. And leading up to that date, they had prayer at 6 o'clock every morning at the church. And Helen Douglas was the first lady at the church every morning. She beat the pastor there. She was waiting at the door when he came to unlock it. And in those prayer meetings, Helen would pour her heart out to God. And she would cry and she would weep. And she'd say, God, I know you're going to supply this need. And she fasted. What a great saint of God she was. And the day for the offering came. The plate came, they were passing the plate. And the plate came to her into her hand, and she just took it and passed it right on to the next person. And God said, Helen, you didn't put anything in the plate. And Helen said, God, I'm Helen Douglas, the poor lady. You know me, I have nothing. Mm. He said, Helen, what do you have to give? She started to get emotional. She opened up her purse. She dug around in her purse and found some change and gathered up all the change and she put the coins in an envelope and she wrote on it, Pastor, it's all I have to give, Helen mm. Douglas. She'd missed the plate. So after the service, she met the pastor down at the front. She handed him the envelope and she was crying. She said, Pastor, I didn't get to put my offering in, in, into the plate. Here's my offering. And the pastor knew her situation. And he hugged her and he said, Helen, you keep that. Helen, we're talking about megabucks here. You keep that. We'll be okay. We'll be. And she said this, no, no, Pastor. I'm not giving this to you. I'm giving this to God. Mm. Oh. And the pastor did something that day he'd never done before or after. He went home, and when he got home, he opened up the envelope, and he poured out those coins. And there was $3.30, mostly in pennies and nickels and dimes. $3.30. The pastor wept, and he said, God, today I think I saw the widow and the two mites. I think I saw a gal who really understands that you own everything and that it's all yours and she just needed to give it to you and let you do whatever you were going to do with it. That night, the pastor went back to the church and they'd actually met the goal. And he got up and he was telling the congregation about the good things that God was doing. He said, you know, I want to tell you people that we have met our goal, but the biggest gift today was three dollars and thirty cents, and those people looked at what three dollars? What? And he told them the story about Helen Douglas, the widow lady, Helen Douglas. She gave all she had, and he finished the story. And as soon as he finished the story, a man over on the my left, I don't know, left side of the congregation, he stood up and he said, "Pastor, if you'll give me one penny out of that envelope, I'll give you ten dollars right now." Pastor, it sounds good to me. And, and, and as soon as that man did that, they began standing up all over that congregation. And, and they came down in the front and, and said, for you, give me a penny. Here's $10. And the pastor just said, hey, keep them coming. That's great. Right on. Come on. Right on down. In a matter of minutes, that $3.30 became $3,300. You see, folks, that's how it works. 
That's how you give according to your ability, and then it becomes beyond your ability. That's what the Macedonian churches did, and that's why Paul said they gave beyond their ability. The little becomes much when we put it in the master's hands. Those people in Macedonia, they made a great choice uh, to be good stewards. Even though they were afflicted, even though they were poor, they're a great example of a faithful church.